Hi there. My name is Sharice and I'm a children's librarian at the Tacoma Public Library. And I will be showing you how to do some simple science, technology, engineering, art, and math activities with everyday materials that you probably already have at home. In this activity, I'll be showing you how to make egg shaker maracas. Supplies are pretty simple. I have some plastic Easter eggs. You probably have some of these after Easter lying around. I have some scotch tape. Uh, feel free to use masking tape or duct tape or electrical tape as well. Taping is optional, but it makes for a more durable shaker that won't come apart as you're shaking it. So I, I recommend it. And you want different materials um, that will make different sounds in your eggs. So I have some dry green split peas. Any kind of dried beans would work really well for this. I have some pennies. Any kind of coins also would work well. And I have some mini jigsaw puzzle pieces. So these are three things I had lying around my house. Other ideas would be marbles, maybe board game pieces, or little pebbles or stones from outside. Anything that can make noise when, when shaken would work. I'm going to start with my purple egg because purple is my favorite color. I'm going to fill a little bit of the green split peas inside and snap it together. I would tape it. I'm not going to just for demonstration purposes, but I would recommend that you tape it. You can even use washi tape. They come in all those fun little colors and designs as well. So now it's ready to go. You just shake it. And in the pink shaker, I'm going to put some pennies. One, two, three, four pennies. Snap it shut. And that's what a penny shaker sounds like. And then in the green egg, I'm going to put some puzzle pieces. One, two, three, four, five puzzle pieces. And then it's fun to compare the different sounds as well. So we have the green slip piece and the puzzle pieces. And like I said, I would recommend taping these um, so that way they won't pop apart when you are shaking them. They're really, really fun to use as part of songs, especially. Um, so I would recommend you using them. Music is really important for children to, to develop early literacy skills, especially for toddler age children. So these could be a really fun addition to any kind of music activity. In this activity, I'll show you how to make a really fun math sorting tray for your children to work on their math sorting and color sense skills as well. For our materials, I have just a standard 12 muffin pan you can use um, a mini muffin pan. You can use one that just has six if you like. You can also use a recycled egg carton um, or anything else that has a lot of slots, but I think a muffin pan works really well for this purpose. Next, you're going to need construction paper. So I actually just used one sheet. I have a pencil that I use for tracing a circle shape when you cut out your circles. And this is what I used to trace that color shape. I have some scissors for cutting out the circle shapes that go on the bottom of the muffin tin. If you want your child to cut out the pieces, just make sure you use kid friendly scissors and they can do that as well. I have a Sharpie for writing numbers on the circles. Um, really any kind of marker would work. Even a pencil if it was pretty visible. Optional um, to have some tape if you want to tape the bottom of your uh, shapes into the muffin pan, but you don't necessarily have to. 
I have my counting materials, so I just have a little mini um, thing of Fruit Loops, and I like these because they come in different colors as well. So these will be what children are actually putting into the tray to work on their math. And to help develop fine motor skills, I have just a little measuring spoon here that children will use to put the cereal into the tray. You can use a kid-friendly spoon, an adult spoon if they're working on their um, silverware skills. You can use mini tongs, plastic tongs if you have them, or anything else that is kid-friendly. Or they can just use their fingers, nothing wrong with that. So to get started here, this is the sheet of paper where I have already cut out all the circles, but basically, I took a piece of construction paper and I used this to trace a circle because so, circles are really hard to draw and cut out so it helps if you have something to trace. Once I did that, I just used the scissors as you can see in my scraps to cut out all the circles. So I have 12 little circles here. Next, you're going to write different numbers or math problems on them. So I've written on all of these already. I have, for instance, the number seven, subtraction problem, so six minus three, five minus two, three times zero, two minus one, and then some numbers as well, number three, etc. So you can make the actual math problems as easy or as difficult as you like, depending on, I think, the age of the child and what kind of math they are learning. So basically you put the labeled number on the bottom, and this is where you can tape if you like, but you don't have to. They don't have to be in order. You can if you want. Um, it make it a little easier, I think, if they were in like one to 12 number order. So once again, lots of opportunities to make it as easy or as difficult as you like on this one. Okay. They're all in. So these are all different slots. Basically, the child is going to take their material. So you can use uh, jelly beans, Cheerios, dried beans, dried seeds, mini marshmallows, Fruit Loops, whatever you have around the house. That's just kind of a small kid friendly um, material that they can use. So this first slot here is actually a number one. So I'm going to go ahead and put one Fruit Loop in there. And the second slot here you can see is a number seven. So I'm going to count out seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one, this next slot is a little trickier. I did a little trickier problem. So three minus zero, that's zero. So it doesn't get any. This next one up here is a number three. So count out three of my Fruit Loops. I'll do it all in one go. So there's three and so on. Uh, once your child completes this, it's a really good opportunity to go over the answers with them. And if there's any problems that are um, that they're kind of getting messed up on, it's a really good opportunity to go over that with them and talk about it and do some counting as well. Another way that you can do this to make it a little bit um, harder is to use different colors. So instead of I used all pink construction paper for the circles, 
you can do different colors. So if this was yellow and I had something like my Fruit Loops that have a bunch of different colors in them, then you could say I want two yellows in here and then they would have to sort. There's a yellow and here's the second yellow. Put two yellows in there. So that adds a second dimension of color sense um, with the math sorting. So that's a really good idea, especially for preschool children learning their colors. So that's a really super simple way to make a cool math sorting tray with stuff that you have lying around your house. In this activity, I'm going to show you how to make a Moncala game board using an egg carton. So I have the bottom of a recycled egg carton here. I just cut the top off and removed it. And this is going to be our Moncala game board. I have two small pinch bowls. These are going to be the, rece the Moncala receptacles on either side of the board. So to play, you would just set your bowls on the end here. Now Moncala is a two player game that has a long ancient history. So for more details and the history of Moncala and how to actually play, see the link that we've provided to get all set up. Additionally, we need some game pieces. So it's a two player game. We need 24 pieces of one kind for player one and 24 pieces of another kind for player two. Now I'm using whatever I had lying around my house. So I have 24 pennies and I have 24 of my small jigsaw puzzle pieces. Now to get set up, we have 12 different holes here and each side is a player side. So if I was um, player one, this would be my row down here. Player two, this would be their row up here. And each person has a Moncala receptacle. And simply to get set up, these are the, um, the pennies. Simply to get set up, you just put four in each hole. And now the other player's jigsaw pieces. Anything that's small that would fit into your egg carton holes spots would be perfect. You just kind of want to make sure that you know which pieces you have. For instance, one person can be Cheerios, one person can be jelly beans. So that way it doesn't get too confusing as you are using the game board. Now I have all my materials set up in the game board and I am ready to play. Uh, Moncala is, like I said, is an ancient game, has a lot of history. It's a fun strategic game to play and it's really easy to make your own game board. So uh, make your game board, check out how to play in the instructions that we've included and have fun.